Greetings everyone, welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name's Frank Summers. Tonight we're going to talk about what is a peg. So let's hop inside of Harmony. Uh, for me, when I was coming from Flash into Harmony, I was able to grab what a peg was a little easier because it is very similar to a null in After Effects, uh, if you're familiar with After Effects. And what is a null or what is a peg? Well, quite simply, a peg is an invisible object that is simply used to just move other things around with. Uh, and that's basically it, really. Uh, and as simple as that concept is, you can still do a lot of really uh, useful and handy things with pegs, and they're almost uh, indispensable. The name comes from a traditional animation standpoint, or a background, if you will, since Harmony, or Toon Boom in general, really always says Harmony has its roots in traditional animation. Um, it comes from peg bar, the word of a, a peg bar, where you would take multiple layers of, of traditional hand-drawn sheets of paper and you use a peg bar to kind of move them all together and slide them around underneath of the camera to create either a multi-plane effect, what have you. So that is what a peg is. Uh, so why don't we just show a few couple quick examples. I'll show, I have my, my square, my circle, my triangle, and there they are. And let's just say I wanted them to move from the top of the screen down to the bottom of the screen. And I could certainly do, yes, I could do this. I could grab one, it would help if I went through the entire length. I can grab them all at the same time and then hit play and they're kind of like, oh, alright, you know, they're, they're getting there, they're kind of getting down. And of course, yes, I can grab them all at the same time and then drag them all down at the same time. And yes, now they're moving together in sync. However, what I could also do, let's get rid of that stuff, is to use a peg to use, to, to move them across the page. Uh, we can take a peg, how do you do it from here? I don't, I'm so used to not doing it anymore. If we just go down here and hit peg, it will display only, display all, peg. Uh, there it is, there's our peg down here in the bottom. Uh, it has a little, little S-curve shape to it. If you go up in our node view, there it is up there. Let me get rid of this color card. I popped up there by accident. And we just parent things to it simply by selecting them and dragging and dropping. And there we have, voila. We now have things connected to the peg. And now we can use the peg. Let's rename this. Let's shapes. Sometimes by, I, I, depending on what it is, I'll put the word peg at the end of it, just so I know. And put a keyframe there. It's yellow, if you notice. Yellow generally means you are selecting a peg. Pop a keyframe down, and I know I'm using a peg because it is yellow. And do the same thing. The animation going up and down, on my, north and south on my screen, is being accomplished by my peg. So, what does that mean? That means that I can independently now animate my square doing this, this. I'm just moving it back and forth and like this. And I'm still having my up and down motion going. Uh, another handy thing to do, a peg is also very handy to, if you're using just essentials or um, advanced, you can use a peg to easily uh, organize your timeline by nesting things inside of or underneath the peg so we can kind of clean our timeline up a little bit. That's another handy way of using a peg. Uh, I often use pegs, let me zonk this one and let me get rid of this animation. Uh, uh, oh, quickly, uh, a shortcut for anybody is Control p will pop a peg down. If I have things selected and hitting Control p it will automatically parent everything to it. Uh, a handy thing to do, so let's just say I have a peg for now, I'm going to call it Scale. I do this quite often. And let's just pretend I have my, s I'll hook up my peg to my square and I want to scale him because he's far away or something like that and let's pretend my circle and my triangle they also need to be the same scale well the second I parent them to it they are inheriting the scale so that's a good way of keeping all of your characters in a scene if they're all coming in independently it's a good way of keeping their scale grouped together um, so that you're not like sitting there trying to eyeball it or anything you just use a single peg adjust your scale once and away you go. Uh, I'd like to also point out right quick, uh, quickly right now, this is another one of those weird um, finicky things 
with harmony. Uh, let me unhook quickly. Uh, if I wanted to change the anchor point of a drawing, I use my pivot point to put that anchor point wherever I want. Right? Makes sense. There's a tool that is solely devoted to changing the pivot point of a drawing. Not the case with a peg for some strange reason. Um, a peg. <laughs> Let me, let me zonk it. Let me just get a fresh peg. Uh, a peg, uh, the, 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 in order to adjust the, and there it is right there in the center. If I, I think I unhook it, yeah, that's like that little, if you see that little box right there, that's kind of like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's just a bunch of handles that mean nothing. Uh, it will allow me to rotate it. So if I do some rotation here and I hook this peg up to the square, my peg will rotate. Um, but getting back to what I'm trying to say here, uh, the the anchor point is here someplace, and let's just say I wanted the anchor point of the peg to be in the center of my square. In order to, yes, I can temporarily drag it and move it, and voila, there it is. But the second I click off of it, it's you know it's it's not doing me any favors. It's going back to its beginning point, right? Let's undo to permanently, and I use the word permanently loosely here because you can change it whenever you want. To permanently change it you have to use one of the um, use the rotation or scale tool. I don't think you can do it with this with the translate tool. I think this is the rotate school tool and by clicking and dragging the anchor point of the peg now it will stay it will stay put. So if I click off, go back to my peg, it will the anchor point now is I don't know why. You know, that's definitely one of the na weird po nagging points with me and Harmony. I, I don't know why there's a tool that's devoted to this solely sole purpose of of putting an anchor point. I don't know why the peg just you cannot use that for the peg. Uh, but there you have it. Um, what else does this mean for pegs? So let's just get rid of this stuff and show something a little more functional, possibly. So this is a character I've been working on for a while. I play around with every once in a while. Uh, we use pegs to group things in a very in a meaningful way. I always have a master peg that controls everything. So I can move her around and scale her. Um, that's being controlled by the master peg. Going down my hierarchy, and just make it a little bigger. Uh, the head is always has a master peg for the head. Generally the anchor point is around the neck and so I can rotate like that. Uh, generally speaking, I haven't opened this up in a little while. I kind of forget. Yeah, there's one in the torso, so my torso has a peg. So, you know, we can quickly, using B and Shift B to go up and down our hierarchy, go and quickly add in a little pose right there. So pegs are useful for grabbing multiple pieces of ele el multiple elements and moving them around in a meaningful way. The face has its own peg. And if I was to slide that around, there's a cutter going on cutter effect going on inside of her face. So pegs are very handy. They're very useful. You cannot use an effect on a peg. I've read that before in the message boards on, on, on Toon Boom's message boards. People are, are like, why can't I put a blur on this peg? It's because a peg is only uh, it's only transformation information. It's only X, Y, and Z coordinates, scale, skew, that what have you. It has nothing to do with the image um, that, you, that, is, that is making up the character. So uh, like a blur, you can't put a blur on it. You cannot put, uh, you, you know, you can't put a color scale on a on a peg. It just won't happen. So that about does it for that. Today is a, this is going to be a light one from last week's episode with the introduction to deformation. Uh, that was definitely a that's a tough one. So, I, but I, if there's a lot of a lot of good information in that one, I, please re-listen to that one again and try and pick up on all the little nuances there. Uh, you see a red subscribe button there. Please click that and subscribe to see what I'm up to. Keep up to date with all my uh, all my postings. I do the Wednesday lunch live sketch every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. I do these Toon Boom Harmony tutorials every Monday. They are scheduled to post at 4 o'clock p.m. And I often randomly post things on my channel. I do every once in a while a live animation hangout. Whatever. I don't know. Whatever. I have the time to do that. Thank you very much for joining me this week, guys. I hope to see you again soon, and take care.